The modern business world is a cutthroat environment, but there are a few industry sectors where that is more true than the world of freelance contract killing. But despite this, it still attracts hundreds of potential hopefuls every year. One of these is Mike Sanders, a vending machine repairman from Kidderminster. A recent divorcee, he's taken a week's break from his job to find out if he's got what it takes to become a cold-blooded assassin. For Mike, it's make or break in seven days. Mike is 33 years old and has been servicing vending machines since leaving school. His wife Catherine left him six months ago and since then he's been looking at his life in a new light. I started off as a bit of a laugh really. I was down the pub with my mates you know, uh, talking about off in the mother-in-law and uh, they said well there's quite a lot of money to be had in contract killing and I thought well, I've always wanted to work for myself you know interesting career change. I don't think I'd have a problem killing strangers. I mean, I don't break for pedestrians. So it'd be the same as that, really. I've watched a few films, and uh, in comparison to, you know, uh, repairing and shifting vending machines, well, I'm confident I can give it a go. Against the advice of friends, Mike put an ad in the local paper. Amazingly, this has resulted in a call, setting up this meeting with a local man. Mike suggested the venue. It's an unorthodox one, to say the least. The client was also somewhat alarmed to find out that Mike was being filmed for a documentary, but agreed to proceed after a guarantee of anonymity. well considering. I was a bit nervous but I'll put on a professional face. Now, the thing to do now is to go off and uh, plan the target's execution. Mike seems pleased with the way the meeting went, but does the client feel the same way? The venue was the first thing that made me wonder. He was quite polite and seemed highly excited about the whole affair. He didn't ask too many questions, which is good. One shuns curiosity on this type of enterprise. But I had to suggest he took a photograph of the target so he'd know who to off, as it were. How did he react to your prompting him? He seemed to think it was a brilliant idea. He said he'd use it in future. And are you confident that he'll be able to eliminate your undesirable? Well, someone's going to die, I know that much. And as he didn't ask for any money up front, I shall watch the proceedings with interest. Back at the house, Mike gets busy. Well, the first thing we have to do is to work out the target's movements and then we have to plan an attack in a quiet spot. Mike seems to have got the basic idea, but will he be able to come up with the right mix of location and opportunity? I'm going to do him in Tesco's. In Tesco's? Yes, he goes to the 24-hour one just down the road late some evenings and I'm going to get him in the freezer aisle. I, uh, I can get a shot off at him between the chest freezer and the tin tuna which is on the shelf just above. I can be buying some salmon. I have a cat, so that story will hold. You don't think it's a bit public? Uh, well, no, it's, it's quite, quite quiet at that time of night and uh, hopefully with any luck the body won't be discovered until the morning. I see. Do you have a silenced weapon? Uh, no but I'm going to muffle the sound with a bag of peas. The assassin's weapon is his life. Have you managed to acquire a suitable firearm? Ah, uh, yes. 
I acquired this from a car boot sale under an assumed name. Uh, the chap assures me that it's in fire working order, so we're all set. Now we just have to wait till tonight. He's found it down, loaded up man trucking. We gonna do what they say can't be done. We've got a long it's 10 past 11, and Mike is putting his master plan into action. Mike's in luck. The target is here. Right, here goes. For Mike, it's now make or break time. Mike has made his move, but has he done it? plan didn't go quite as well as I had hoped. The principal snag with the plan was covering the muzzle of the flintlock with the bag. This caused a build out of back pressure which in turn destroyed the weapon and my chances of a clean kill. I'm going to bed now. Mike's first attempt has not been a successful one. It's 7 a.m. on day two. And after last night's fiasco, Mike is back on the warpath. Led down by his antiquated firearm, Mike has decided to resort to something simpler. So your first attempt didn't work out too well. Not as such, no. I decided that the plan failed due to an excessive reliance on technology. So what have you come up with? I see. This is an early Celtic design, much favoured weapon of the early Britons. I'm now going round to his place to club him into oblivion. Mike is on his way, but his hasty departure meant that he left his driving glasses at home. For Mike, this is a bit of a problem. Right, here goes. Mike is proving a persistent assassin, but will he also prove an effective one? He wasn't in. Mike has been foiled again. The target, alarmed by the incident last night, is now on his guard and has stopped answering the door. It's now one o'clock on day two and Mike is back at the drawing board. He's decided on a new angle of attack. So you've decided on an explosive device? Yes. <clears throat> I have here a homemade Claymore mine, uh, which is essentially an ice cream tub filled with nuts and bolts uh, from my jar in the shed. And what is the actual explosive? Glycerine. You mean nitroglycerin? Ow. Oh. Mike is not doing well. It's late afternoon on day two, and so far he's achieved very little. 
His latest attempt involved him sending the target a top of laxative. If he's to achieve his goal by the end of the week, he's going to need some help. In the next part, he'll be introduced to some people who've been successfully performing contract executions at an international level, and we'll see how he matches up to their standards. Day three, and we've decided to give Mike some expert advice. Using our contacts, we've hired a group of South African mercenaries to show him how it's done. In an anonymous hotel room, Mike is going to meet the professionals. We've already told Dieter, the mercenary's captain, about Mike's last attempts. He's less than impressed. This guy is clearly a f***ing amateur. He's got no idea of what he's doing. If he was up against any sort of protection officer setup, they'd have shot him dead at the start. He has no idea what's going on. Yes, now I am quite nervous. Um, you know, it's one thing to uh, decide on a career change, but to be matched up against the top talent in the field this early on in the game is quite intimidating. And now Mike's schooling begins in earnest. We've got four days to do this, so we have to train you hard and we have to train you fast. And you are going to have to do everything you're told, understand? Yes, but... No buts! You f***ed up, haven't you? Well, I... Listen, you'll be trained in close quarters battle and covert intrusion. This should teach you everything you need to get in there, set up your kill and execute it. Mike is being taken in hand by the group, who have an impressive trophy list of dignitaries and underworld figures. In order to maintain anonymity for its members and disguise their numbers, Everyone in the group, with the exception of Dieter, is called Klaus. Day four, and Mike is on his way to a secret location in the New Forest, where his training will begin. This exercise is designed to render you invisible. You will learn to make use of cover and be quiet at all times. It's our sole intention to render you undetectable as a fart in a jacuzzi. Mike is learning the skills that will make him an effective predator in a woodland setting but he's having a few issues. It's evening on day four, and Mike has been put through his paces. Now he'll need to use what he's learned to Klaus's satisfaction. All right, you've now been trained to move with purpose and stealth. Now you'll be set a test. Tonight, you'll be taken out by my men, and you will stalk and kill a deer. Failure is not an option. It's been a tough day. I've learned all sorts of things, things that I didn't think were possible or allowed. So how do you feel about the mission tonight? Uh, it's going to be a real evaluation of my skills. I'm a little concerned, though. I always thought that deer were protected by the Queen. That could be swans, though. It's going to be a long night, both for Mike and for those with him. But by dawn, he may have proved that he's got what it takes to get the job done. Dawn on day five. 
and the sunrise brings with it the news that whilst Mike has indeed made his first kill, all did not go according to plan. At some point in the small hours of this morning, Mike managed to shoot one of the Klauses. Um, yes, well, what can you say? It was an honest mistake. Yeah, it's a tough trade. Uh, there's always going to be casualties. But, uh, of course, what everyone seems to be forgetting, that despite the regrettable fact that it was one of ours, it was actually quite a good shot. But whilst Mike may be able to laugh off this latest blunder, back in London, Dieter is less than amused. Whilst Dieter mourns the loss of one of his best men, Mike heads home to undertake the last stage of his training, shadowing the target in an urban setting. Can he put the skills learned from the late Klaus to good use? Will he be as undetectable as flatulence in a jacuzzi? Or will he stand out like a dead nun? Find out in part three. Mike's getting ready to go out. For this stage of the training, the cameraman accompanying him will be beaming the footage to a secure satellite. From his hotel room, Dieter will be monitoring Mike's performance and giving us a running commentary on how things are going. Dieter will be able to give commands to Mike via a radio piece in his ear. Mike will not be able to respond, but he'll be able to hear everything Dieter is saying. Given the mood Dieter is in, this may not help Mike's confidence. Mike has spent a couple of hours getting ready, dressing inconspicuously to become the Grey Man. And he's already off to a shaky start. Mike is heading into town, heading for the selected kill zone. The target is currently at a dentist's appointment, and Mike hopes to intercept him as he leaves, providing him with an ideal opportunity for a drive-by shooting. Unusually, Mike has selected an assault rifle for this mission. Most car-based takedowns are performed with smaller weapons, and Dieter is having doubts that the M16 Mike is using will be suitable for the job. And after only 10 yards, Mike has run out of diesel. Meanwhile, back in the hotel room, Dieter has had enough. Mike is now on his own. Dieter and the remaining classes have pulled out of the project, leaving Mike with a couple of guns and two days to carry out his task alone and the client is starting to get a bit impatient. Yes, now I understand matters are in hand and I'm confident that in a few days we'll... Uh... Oh. Is it? It's not good news. Oh yes, well in that case we'll, uh, we'll expedite matters accordingly. The client is called to say that his trial has been brought forward and that the target is due to testify against him tomorrow afternoon. If Mike is to collect his fee, he'll have to make the kill within the next 18 hours. Mike has decided to do a bit of research. The clock is ticking and he'll have to move fast to get the job done, but he's decided to invest valuable hours at his local library. Mike has been painstakingly researching everything he can find connected with the Kennedy assassination. I'm hoping from this research that I can uh, find a plan that works. If Oswald can take down the president faced with the entire American Secret Service, I'm hoping that I can too. For Mike, it's going to be another long night. I think I'll come up with a plan. So we'll just have this and then we'll go put it in action. Mike's plan takes a lot from Dallas 1963, but in a break from his past form, this one looks like it has a chance of working. 
In order to get to his court appearance, the target must cycle down this road here and then turn sharply right. But to do that, he'll need to enter the pedestrian area, which means he'll need to dismount and thereby slow down to around 4 miles an hour. This is Mike's opportunity. But in order for Mike to ensure that he has the right angle, he'll need to be in an elevated position somewhere in this building here. And as if to confirm Mike's plan, this building is the Hertfordshire Book Depository. Mike's off now to see if he can get a job there. If he gets the job, there's a good chance he'll be able to get into the stockroom and get a shot off. The job will also give him a good alibi. But will he be hired? I've got the job. Let's see how we get on, shall we? Tell me I haven't. There's a problem. With just 10 minutes to go, Mike has discovered that he has left the silencer at home. Hmm. I must have left it on the sideboard. This presents a serious issue for Mike. Without the silencer, his shot will be clearly audible to hundreds of people. But there's no time to go home and get it, and if he doesn't make the shot by 1 p.m., he'll lose the contract. I'm going to go for it. Hopefully people will just think it's a backfiring car. And now Mike waits, something every assassin must learn to do. The target still hasn't arrived and Mike has only seven minutes of his lunch break left. Then... Oh, the target has arrived. Mike has done it. He's made his first contract kill with only minutes to spare. But did he enjoy it? It's been hard work, but good fun. Now I've achieved what I set out to do. <clears throat> and the clients paid me, which is very nice. And you, the fees you can charge are quite substantial. But at the end of the day, I've proved to myself and my kids that I've got what it takes to be a cold-blooded killer. And your ex-wife? Oh yes. I'm going to prove it to her too. So Mike has set out on a new career. He survived the first week, the most critical time for people setting out on their own. In the next program, we'll be following someone else's efforts as they attempt to make or break in seven days.
is our sole intention to render you undetectable. Like a fart in a jacuzzi. <laughs> <laughs> and cut! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, you've got to understand why that's difficult. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> OK.